out of hero's heart this is kyle ferguson i'm sitting down today with simplicity hosty who is fresh from their weekend victory for the ccl hosty how does it feel to be victorious in the very first ccl honestly it feels great and uh it feels even better in the fashion we did it it was fashionable for sure uh so so this draft gets going and nobody bans the medivh a chromie is picked up over there was the medivh always planned for this game so pretty much they took chromie on the first pick to try to deny it from me um we've had really really good success with it throughout the tournament and even in this match so they wanted to deny it uh but this opened up for one of our like draft plans which is diablo medivh and we think it's really 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 strong into chromie because what you don't want to do against chromie is just long range poke battles because she will win that every time so medivh gives you the option to hard engage and with the diablo for the apoc combo it's incredibly strong so it's less so about countering a kind of kelta zod situation where you're going to get rewound and hit by all these things in a quick succession that would cause the shield to hit it's more so that medivh allows you to access the chromie exactly interesting and uh, you right mentioned... now you could kind of see there's just some brawling going on so with medivh you really want to stack early uh one misplay if you want to look right now is i'm hovering the top side it's not actually doing anything but masquerade went really aggressive <laughs> in mid and i wasn't there to help him so this was one of my misplays uh kind of just from miscommunication in game now I, I will give you the benefit of the doubt there though because they left the entire lane up top seemingly unsoaked so the fact that they were there was a surprise yeah it was but as a mediv uh what you can do is like right now i'm in bird form you can't take damage and you have full vision so your job is to keep tabs on the enemy players while you're stacking that's like your early game strategy that's all you have to do this might be a nebulous question but how do you balance helping your team scouting and stacking all at the same time in the early game? Um, so that's where just game experience comes into play. Like you, you need to play the character enough to uh, know when to do what. So right now, like my team is fairly safe. So I'm just going for stacks. However, again, miscommunication. Cure wanted to go in and we did not want that so he paid with his life however it's just a leoric yeah so leoric value right. right exactly yeah yeah well I, it's cool to hear how critical you are of yourself uh, i mean that this is a very complicated character now, now you mentioned early on that you got the medivh and the diablo which yep. there's an apoc ley line combo is there anything yes. else you're thinking about with that combo yeah, so the portal allows Diablo to get good angles for wall bangs. Um, mm. that, that's one of them. Number two, Diablo is very tanky when he gets his souls up. So that plus the shields on Diablo make him almost unkillable. That makes sense. So you're going to help him get angles. Does that mean you know which angles Diablo wants? Are you a good Diablo player? Uh, you know, it depends who you ask. If you ask me, I'm a great Diablo player. If you ask anybody else, not so much. Fair so. enough, fair enough. Yeah, I've, I play Diablo in Storm League too. I know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That has to that has to be a lot of game knowledge because uh, the, the quote I always hear is that Mediv fundamentally changes the game. So people he never want to play does. against it. Yeah. So Mediv definitely bends the rules. Um, however, you know, at high level play, it uh it gets a lot more difficult to play the medivh because the other team knows how to play against the medivh mm. so when they know how to play against the medivh if they have a comp that could pre pressure you you have to be very very careful because a lot of times if you try to try to play normal and play shield on the first target they're looking at you from the back so oh there's that extra layer where they're gonna dodge who you shield so you need to get in these mind games back and forth exactly has anything changed at this point in communications? It seems like now suddenly the portals are really lining up with everybody's goals. Yeah, so right now we were like, all right, guys, uh, like we're up 3-0, sure, but uh, let's stop trolling. We're dying too much. And Lutano says, let me die one more time. And then we take <laughs> it seriously. <laughs> well, it... <laughs> it's a Gary Bala. 
you know, you got to get them in early where it doesn't matter as much. Because exactly. you're very, very important later on. So even now you could see, like, look how much damage Diablo has taken. Yeah. He's still not dead. Well, and something that seems so obvious is just the awareness that Diablo even has for these portals. In our home games, that portal would go unnoticed, unused, yes. and you guys were coordinated enough to do that. Uh, you're picking up talents in the background. I definitely want to talk about those, but tell me about the enemy team here. Is there heavy um, counters to this play? So... Oh, sorry, I ask that again with the, the enemy team, like their composition? Yeah, is, are, is their team anti medieve anti apoc So they're... We don't think their composition is actually too good into us. Like, I am very comfortable playing Medivh this game. I think I could do a lot of work. Usually, there's heroes like Zero Tool that can pressure the Medivh. Uh, there's backliners like Sylvanas that could silence portals. Uh, there's healers like Malfurion that could root on portals. They don't really have these tools to shut down the Medivh. So it's more on our discipline to just take the good engages that we want and not give them the engages they want. Interesting. So Garrosh repositions people could taunt and locate someone away from a portal. But yes. you would see a counter in more a area effect denial. Yeah. So Garrosh is one of the tanks that is best against Medivh. I think Diablo is even better because he can pressure Medivh heavily. Mm. And... Um, but, but Garrosh, like, displacement in general is good against Medivh. That's why you, you see Junkrats being picked against Medivh and, and Garrosh's, Diablo's. You just want to throw the Medivh around. Reposition him, stop him from being yeah. exactly where he wants to be. Exactly. Let's talk so a right little now, bit. Right now, I'm just, like, keeping an eye on Garrosh this entire time, uh, uh, making sure he can't get in a good position. Actually, there, there's something else that came up. You got your stacks done uh, in the first five yeah. minutes or so, five minutes, 30. Uh, yeah. What What is a rate that a hopeful Medivh should look to complete their stacks in? So four minutes is like always my goal if I'm aggressively stacking. Uh, however, in general, you want to do it by level 10 would be great. That's like six to eight minutes. So right now I get, I'd say, a perfect engage on the back line. We're just going on uh, Tychus here and with the combo he gets blown up with Vala pressuring around the top. Now, you, you and Brightwing are here to take care of her, so the tank and the off tank with Leoric are off doing their own business. <laughs> Surprise, Garrosh exactly. walks around the corner and <laughs> finds everybody still waiting for him. How would that situation there have looked different if you had not had your stacks done? Uh, we lose a little bit of damage. I didn't actually do any calculations to see if that would have made a difference um, on the kill on Tychus. It definitely could have. Uh, that's one way it can make a difference because you generally don't want to play too aggressively until you're done your stacks. Because mm. Medivhs that die before stacks are completed, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bad feeling. It's a very bad feeling. So it's kind of a double whammy then. So not only are you f not free to move around the map because you're so busy stacking, your damage is lower and you can't take those risks anymore. So it does sound a lot like if you exactly. wanted to become a good Medivh, it's a lot like becoming a good Zeratul, knowing exactly who you can trade with, who you can stack on, and testing those limits. Yeah, 100%. So, and, and stacking early with Medivh is, like you said, it's incredibly important for all those reasons. If you can't play aggressively, um, and, and you can't like drop down to shield your opponents because, or your teammates because you're scared to lose stacks, a, a lot of times you'll make suboptimal plays Tell me about your talents a little bit. We've gotten pretty deep here. We're at level 13 already, but Portal Mastery at 1, are there other options? So Portal Mastery at 1, I'd say take it every single time because what it allows you to do is you could make a portal from any point near you and you could direct it in any way. So it gives you freedom as opposed to where you have to drop it right at your character. But right now, there's uh, a bit of a skirmish, but actually looks like they won, right? Yeah. Because we got a really, really good engage. But after we killed our target, Brightwing was a little out of position and got traded on. However, now we have a Diablo with Medivh shields, and this is where you're going to see how uh, powerful that combination can be. Right, well, he's got the Feast on Fear. 
he has the life leash. So with a shield to catch the majority of the burst, he's basically unkillable out here. Pretty much. And now able to trade back and forth for those new angles, using the yep. minion there to speed up. Uh, that was so he went he went fast there. I guess that was a brightwing speed boost. Yeah, he charged into the minion and he was able to catch up to the player doing that. I'll go over the rest of the talents. Yeah. Um, on Medivh really quick. So Raven Familiar at four. Uh, it's one of the strongest bursts that Medivh has because when four people take that. It's 800 damage, right? Right now. And it slows your opponents. So as long as everyone takes the portal, you could not only get that damage, but if you take the portal back, you get it again. So it's a lot of extra damage and utility on the portal. Level seven, Arcane Explosion. It's, this is a talent, you know, in your games, it's a little situational because you're not gonna take it if you have full backline uh comp what, what shouldn't happen like you, you should have some tanks and bruisers but it is heroes of the storm and uh <clears throat> sometimes you get you know murky and vikings as tanks so you, you probably don't want arcane explosion in in those situations but i'd say usually you go for that I mean, they're, pretty, is... they're pretty swarmy they're always yes. around the target that you're shielding yeah and i'm usually shielding like a masquerade on diablo that's taking you know 2000 3000 damage or um shielding cure that's really trying to get trait value so sometimes it's like 10k damage on him you know because mm. it's kind of alone but yeah it gets a lot of value in that and leyline uh polymorph and leyline i'd say are 50 50. really okay uh they're both very very good it just depends on the other team and your team so leyline very strong against tyriel because when he sinks that's a time stop too, so you pause the sync. Right, because it's a ground uh, effect, yeah. Exactly, so um, if you have a Diablo, Apoc, if you have, let's say a Hanzo, you could arrow on top of that. So there's a lot of Wombo effects with Leyline. However, I'd say Polymorph is a lot more consistent. So right here, you see the uh, Apoc Leyline combo. However, because it went like horizontally and four different heroes got hit, but at different times, Really, we only needed APOC to hit Sonya. That was our kill target. That's a great and, point to make. Yeah. A lot casters... of people, when they saw that, right. would say, oh, the, the combination missed. But no, we hit our intended target, Sonya, and we killed him. Well, and see, here seeing your view of that, it was a long way to go. And right, it's going to have completely different time stop variants based on when they yep. were hit. You got the pick in front, you were able to advance. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry the casters gave you a hard time about that one. That's actually really, really <laughs> cool. That's a great decision. So this is where the 16 uh, talent tier Mediv kicks in, where I got my lane line back up, even though it's a 80 second cooldown. Every time I Q, it's a 9% cooldown reduction. And every time I auto, it's 3% on top of that. So as you're going to see, I got uh, pretty much three lane lines this fight. And you're auto attacking too, because you've got those familiars out. So might as well yep. be, have increased reduction on top. That's wild. What's your, what's your 13 here? So my 13 is just CDR my W uh, on the will of protection. Now you can go this talent, which is if you're confident in shielding the target that's getting bursted, I think it's by far the best talent. However, if you're not, or if you play a heavy frontline composition, you can go the the shield explo uh, goes on multiple heroes and then it synergizes with the level seven where it'll explode. So if you have four melees and they're all in, say infernal shrines, they're all on top of the shrine. If you shield them all, the the burst on that shrine is is crazy. So uh, you don't always go the enduring will, but it is very strong in most situations. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, so that is not an untalented force of will that they receive. Yeah. So right now the game is building up. You guys are looking at 20, so just playing safe. Anything else in your all's minds? Yeah, right now macro, we're just saying uh, we, we pretty much can't lose as long as we stay together and we don't get picked. Mm. So Legacy was on the top shrine. However, we didn't see them for a bit, so we just told them to get off. Like, the mortal is not worth it. We'll get 20s before they do. So all we have to do right now is play safe, play slow, get the objective with level 20s, and we're going to go for 
uh, a keep. And if we get some kills, we could go for the games. However, usually on this map, you don't go for game winning plays this early unless you get kills. Is that because so that's the, what we're looking for. the core and its pushbacks or what what makes this game go longer on Volskaya? So generally the, the objective is just not strong enough to end because you have to put two people in that objective, which reduces either your pushing power or your survivability. So um, a lot of times when you have two people in here, you're weaker than when you have two people out of here in a team fight. So you have to play a lot more safe generally. How, how would you suggest Blizzard fix that? I mean, if you put low league players in the trig lob, it's probably pretty darn good because uh, you're not losing so, all that power. I I like how Dragonshire is just one person in the objective. I, I would do the same thing with this objective. I wouldn't make it any stronger than it is. Just one person. Mm. Able to do both abilities or would you like kind of a, a robot doing all the firing for you? Uh, definitely not a robot. I'd rather <laughs> I control all the abilities myself. However, some AI are kind of OP. Like Muradin's son never misses. Yeah, no, he's pretty good at it. The bottom lane always seems to be the one targeted. Yeah, you guys are currently playing around the top lane. Why does yeah. the bottom lane get all the focus for the win condition? And why are you currently top? So the bottom... I don't know. It, it's kind of a meta that just developed, and we uh, we used to play like that, and we just didn't really have good success uh, with that kind of style. So we switched it up into just going for forts early, and then maybe going for an open keep. So whatever keep is the most open, which was top for us, mm. or the objective was, we went for. <clears throat> so we don't really look at we have to go on a certain lane. It's more just which lane looks best for us at the time. Now this fight can seem rather chaotic, but this is, I assume you all just pressuring with your 20s, making sure you don't lose that advantage by yeah. backing out now. So we have level 20. We have uh, a Chromie dead, which is their main damage. Ah, uh, yeah. We have Brightwing level 20, which has incredible healing. And we have alts coming back like the Leo and Tomb soon. So we were calling just play four, pressure shields, and look for kills so then at that point cure was calling his entomb is up and he was just screaming it and then as soon as the entombed we just that's when we knew we won so at this point already like we're all focused on uh hitting the core but we're all very you know excited and, and tense because we know we're about to win and that but as you can see like this core attempt was it wasn't easy yeah, well, and that wasn't just stylish either that you were going back between the portals. You were using your Raven Familiar to increase your DPS because they were still responding pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. And also the, uh, yeah, just to like cause confusion on the enemy team. And I uh, dodged one of the uh, core arms uh, yeah. with the portal. So that's very yeah, you cool. Can use it for a lot of different things. Would you ever do anything different at 20? You got Medivh's cheats here. Ah, uh, so sometimes I don't go this. So if we don't have a bright wing, sometimes I'll go invisibility, especially in Storm League games, because you will just make your team invisible, and a lot of times the other team gets confused. Sure. Um, if you if you have a lot of mages, you could go arcane brilliance. Um, or my favorite one is there. There's a Q ability at twenty where you get one shot on every wave of, of minions. So if you have no macro on your team, or say it's a game where the enemy team has both like two of your keeps and you have none of their keeps and you don't have good macro. What Medivh can do is take that talent at level 20 and essentially just wave clear for your team. Instantly. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And then when you're portaling between waves, you, you do it so fast. So you kind of take over the macro and uh, the keep loss isn't so big at that point. You got through this game with zero deaths, about 38,000 damage. Is that a good kind of middle point that Medivh should look for? Or where would where would a Medivh know he was successful? Um, so number one is uh, not dying until you're done stacks. Like that is the most important thing. Once you're done stacks, like it's time to feed for sure. Uh, but this game, it was the fourth game. Like we just really wanted to win. So I made sure I played 
uh, I played safe because we had more than enough damage where I don't need to play over aggressive for my Qs. And I could just uh, make sure I don't get in, in range of Garrosh or in, in danger range. And I could shield Diablo nonstop or Leoric while uh, providing good portals and good shields. Awesome. Thank you for sitting down with me for this replay. My favorite part was just that we got to counter some of the audience and casters worries that you guys didn't know your combo. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. It was entirely intentional the way you paced it and looked very obvious from this point of view. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things where you, you just kind of have to know. But uh, if you do now, now you can easily look out for it. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your victory in the CCL. Everybody watching, there will be more Here's the Storm Learn to Play content on this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll see you soon.